Greetings folks, this is Sayer G, the founder of GreenMedInfo.com and I just wanted to get a message out to folks and also review the uh, present state of our project and where it's going um, so we can touch base. Uh, basically I consider GreenMedInfo.com a collaborative effort. Uh, we do have quite a few contributors now, for example, if you scroll down you'll see there's a stream of articles, approximately two to three a day are uh, put out there. and you know we're a collaborative effort uh, we're getting feedback from uh, our research team now we have about 20 people who are contributing uh, to the database by adding in abstracts from the National Library of Medicine and we have quite a lot of Facebook uh, followers who are helping us on a daily basis refine um, the type of services we provide and the type of information um, that they find compelling and we've got a lot of stuff going on so I just wanted to touch base and really open up um, what what is being done on our side to improve uh, the services and also um, ask you for feedback and uh, any ideas in terms of how we can get better and to get our message out to more people. So what is our message? You'll see on the top uh, greenmaninfo.com here a motto which is education equals empowerment. Now for several ye years it, it said where the evidence is sprouting up and that's still what we're about but it sounded a little bit more like okay we need to provide proof to people of natural medicine having some factual quote evidence base um, in the peer-reviewed literature and it's true that's a big part of what we have done if you look at the new layout we have these six indexes and you can click and see there's a huge data set um, substances in fact have I think 1700 of them are indexed um, so you'll see from A to Z quite a lot is going on here now also just real quick if you were to click this like an Excel sheet it's gonna filter it by the amount of articles uh, per subject I'm gonna turn it the other way and you'll see that in some cases we have you know 1543 studies indexed on turmeric you know, 590 on resveratrol, 283 on theanine. So there are a lot of things that we've um, accumulated here in regard to studies. And um, again, that's that's impressive. It's helpful. We hope uh, we have certain ways of presenting the information now. Uh, in fact, I'll click recruitment to show you real quick why we created membership features. There's two reasons. Simultaneously, we're accomplishing, we hope, I love using the expression freeing two birds with one hand, we're able to sustain ourselves because um, initially this was a non-profit attempt at just getting the research out. No way of um, finding uh, income to support that other than arbitrary donations and it was causing a uh, severe personal uh, tax uh, on both myself and Cameron, the developer, and so we had to find a way to provide um, a monetizable portion to the site. We wanted it to be a way in which we felt people weren't really uh, even breaking even, but were getting more back from the contribution, which is the you know monthly membership, than they were um, uh, giving. So we hopefully accomplished that. So let's say if you look at Kukuman, we have all these studies. Um, by default, the uh, the membership feature shows you two of a list of 570 uh, diseases that have been indexed as potentially being helped by turmeric. Um, and so of course all those studies are below. So they're never limited. You don't have to log in, be a member. You can click any of these. You'll find the full study abstract. You'll find a link right back to the National Library of Medicine on each one. Okay, so we've tried to make that available to everyone. It's still there. But the membership features, of course, enable you to focus the research in a very unique way because we log in. Okay, you know, it took me about four or five months to index um, these studies on curcumin. I looked uh, through almost 4,000 abstracts and uh, was surprised to find so much amazing research on its benefits. Uh, 570 diseases is, is quite a lot. Uh, representing a lot of human suffering that could be alleviated if this were eventually em employed as a, you know, a drug within the conventional medical system. Uh, I don't like calling it a drug, but what I mean is giving it the same respect 
that it deserves as a therapeutic substance. So regardless, you have 570 diseases. Well, of course, it's kind of a mess. Um, let's say you're just looking for a specific data set on diabetes. You have to kind of sort through because it's indexed by the amount of articles to support the connection. So 151 articles on oxidative stress related to curcumin, 51 on inflammation. So we created a few sorting features. So click to sort. If you go here, sorting method, sort quick summaries by title alphabetically. So I'm going to go um, ascending. And so as you can see, it sorts through all 1,511 studies dynamically because this update changes on a daily basis. Um, and you will find now below, all of them are alphabetized. So let me go down through the A's, the B's, go to D. So let me go to diabetes type 2 <clears throat> right here. So there's 12 studies that we found relevant to that. So we click, click select by focus articles. And what it's going to do is spit up those 12 studies right below. So you have those specific to what you're looking for. So this is really the power of the professional membership feature. It enables you to really focus those articles and technically draw up information in a matter of seconds that it took me, you know, sometimes days, weeks, even months to accumulate. So really it's quite a nice system. I, I use it myself quite often and uh, again that's one of the features of I think there's about 10 in the professional membership suite. Um, and again, so the idea is free two birds with one hand. You get an amazing feature if it's something that of course is useful to you and we are able to sustain our database because if we get a hundred members that who are professional that's probably going to be enough to pay our hosting fees for the month and we're getting closer to the point where we can pretty much break even with uh, the basic operating costs through monthly subscribers and so even if you perhaps don't feel like you need that feature uh, we still encourage people to sign up because it's kind of like a, a twenty dollar a month support uh, to a project you believe in and that you can use and freely distribute to others who can use it for free uh, if you need details again on what it is to become a member on the left um, actually I'm logged in as a member so we don't have any advertisement that's another thing we really wanted to do even if you use the Google search we actually pay so that no ads come up it's kind of a strange situation you have to pay Google but well, we wanted to make sure that you weren't being advertised uh, in any way that's another reason why we created membership features um, so that there's not that conflict of interest. So yeah, of course, when you hit the search results, uh, you don't get any ads. Uh, it's often quite jarring to see a natural site with all this great information and on, on you see an ad by a pharmaceutical company on exactly the opposite direction you're looking to go. So again, we're trying to get away from that. So of course, no matter where you are in the site, you can go back and you can click problem substances or any of the indexes to flip through. So I'm going to go back to the home page so I can regain uh, bearings and show you a little bit more about what we've done. Now, you'll see on the top, of course, latest articles, which is now pretty much the stream of blogs that are contributed daily. And what we are trying to do is, instead of just having a database with all this information, we are trying to provide little... Uh, bits of, of digested information, you know, of course through the bias of whoever's writing it, myself often, but you know, for the longest time I didn't want to have any articles because I felt like it would take away from the intentional minimalism of our site project, which was again to just provide the research, peer-reviewed, published, the type of information that is considered um, vetted and valid within the conventional medical system. And unfortunately because of the feedback we received over it being a little overwhelming and not useful um, I, I succumbed eventually and said listen I'm gonna start writing and getting other writers to contribute so you know that is now what we're doing and to a degree it leaves us a little bit more open to criticism because you know for whatever reason you know you give one side two sides of a story there's gonna be about a hundred other sides we can't cover all possibilities and certainly there's potential for error and um, you know again that's a big challenge sometimes with the project but we are trying our best to stay grounded in the research which is why you see our articles link back to the first-hand studies and that's the unique model that we're trying to provide out there you know in the holistic wellness uh, field 
So, um, as I said, um, you can click latest articles. I'm just going to go back to the uh, home page and you'll see there's a whole stream of articles now that will be available. Um, so, here's our home page and you have articles. And these are, of course, um, contributed by anything from your stay-at-home mom, which is, uh, you know, motherhood is like a PhD at the least uh, of, of experience and wisdom. So to me, being a stay-at-home blogger, uh, mother who is interested in traditional foods and or breastfeeding or any topic like that has every uh, bit of the credibility and gravitas of a PhD, which we are thankful we also have now contributing MDs, PhDs, um, whatever certifications um, are considered credible today. Uh, we are very uh, blessed to have that interest and the willingness to have those uh, professionals share as well on our platform. So let's go down and let me show you one thing which is kind of lost in the fray, which is. Uh, which you know what I mean by that is that there's such an overwhelming amount of research that we have designed a system so that you can individualize and access and then publish that research in a very convenient format so clinical tools if you click substance finder by disease sounds geeky but pretty much is exactly what what it sounds like and also we have a video here to kind of describe in greater detail what I'm referring to. Sorry for all the verbiage, but this is sort of a technical uh, description of what you're going to see here, which is let's say uh, we have someone who is interested in the topic of breast cancer. Okay, so what happens is that this um, these fields will basically enable me to select from any number of, I think there's 2,700 nodes in our ailment index. So let's say breast cancer, 566 studies. AC is article count. Then let's say they have a concern with uh, diabetes, type 2. We'll just let it pull up uh, the rel relevant options. Okay. Let's see. Sorry for the delay. Sometimes uh, the connection on this particular computer is, is not there. So there we go. And let's say generally we have issues with inflammation. So it's sort of more of a symptom description not very specific so you can put in up to 10 different diseases slash symptoms let me hit submit and what it's doing right now it's cross indexing all 19,000 um, abstracts looking for those um, studies that are relevant to those three conditions so that we basically get a list uh, which gives the most compelling substance when I say most compelling most compelling by the amount of research and the quality of research uh, for that particular set uh, of information. So we go down and so we see here curcumin is on the top 124 articles and you have soy 19 and this is of course a highly debated topic and of course it's not qualified enough either we're not talking about explicitly organic non-GMO fermented soy uh, but I will also say that this is a surprising feature of our database is that when I started this project I was pretty hardcore anti-soy campaigner for good reason is that there's so many reasons to hate this particular food right now I mean it represents uh, quite frankly the you know the destruction of the biosphere because most all of it is is GMO in this country so and saturated with glyphosate a very toxic herbicide and people are consuming massive amounts daily it's not being respected as a medicine which is really what all beans are in my opinion I mean they can be converted into food but they're really more med medicinal substances than uh, food substances for me so regardless um, I was shocked to find the rather large data set and of course you can click on any of these and you can see what we're referring to uh, because the soy page which will load in a second has several hundred studies on its um, studied benefits for uh, probably over a hundred different conditions and so when I ran into this research I was um, humbled because I have to acknowledge uh, the research when it's presented to me and okay 235 different diseases and look what's on top breast cancer some of these studies are actually human studies showing reduction in recurrence of breast cancer in women whereas the conventional oncology community is also saying stay the heck away from soy or any phytoestrogen and of course I've written pretty extensively on the topic of why that is is a rather dangerous and overly simplistic um, uh, 
analysis of of soy and its and its potential benefits. So, anyway, so you see this list that's generated based on the conditions slash symptoms that are inputted, and so this gives you at least a general sense of okay, well, these substances might be of value, uh, considering what I've put into the um, those fields. Goes down. And then it also lists, because we don't just have, of course, therapeutic substance indexes, we have problematic ones as well. So, gosh, we'll keep going down. Okay, wow, big list. And you have problem substances. So here's nine studies uh, connecting fructose as a problematic substance in, in these three conditions, uh, statin drugs, pesticides, blah, blah, blah. Now, of course, this isn't just a list. Okay, therapeutic action, same thing, beneficial things. It's not just a generic list, but what happens basically is that this is actually generating a report with 754 studies. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to print with one simple click, and this is also uh, something members can do without charge because they're given what are called tokens or GMI tokens with their monthly membership that do accrue, so they quote carry over. So the download cost for this entire document, which includes 756 studies relevant to those three diseases I've put in, is 20 tokens. I click here, and what it's doing is it's actually creating a, a digital PDF which references the summarization here of, quote, the most compelling substances, but then does something very special. It lists, here I'm going to open the PDF. Of course, this is something you own, and um, this is three point eight megabytes so it's going to take apparently about a minute and a half for me to download right now based on my connection speed but uh, you'll see in a minute what it's going to do is basically open up a document that links all of those studies back to the National Library of Medicine so let's say you you found curcumin has this potential value for for this for these three conditions then you're going to be able to just click just those 124 studies <laughs> um, and it will take you back to the National Library of Medicine where they came from at the exact location. So this is, in other words, a time-saving um, device that enables people basically to uh, get the research that took quite some time to accumulate, but in a way that's individualized. So let's say they're a practitioner, an MD who's interested in integrative medicine. You know, they're able to take people with specific health concerns and then get the research relevant not just to the specific um, concern but of course the whole picture so that's part of really what we're trying to do or let's say we're just curious and you know we want to find um, substances that let's say work on multi-drug resistance multi-drug resistance okay uh, to go this way cancers and let's do multi-drug resistant let me do antibiotic resistant um, infection because I'm very concerned and interested about this problem which is that both um, chemotherapy and conventional antibiotics often result in the uh, drug resistant either cancer cells or bacteria so it would be interesting to see what overlaps I hit submit and I'll show you the downloaded PDF as well that we did right before this while we're waiting okay and you don't even have you don't even get charge for for using this you don't have to give up tokens you can use this system as a member all day long if you like um, so interestingly enough garlic turns out to have um, activity apparently it's number one on the list let me see then you have cinnamon honey okay so I'm sorry here is the original uh, download for those three conditions we looked at so it gives you on the left you know the ability to zip right through to the relevant substances as well as the list that shows you what's most compelling and so this PDF of course you own you can distribute um, you know and it's a uh, part of the membership uh, process or let's say you don't want to be a member but you just want to use this feature you can hit GMI tokens and you have the ability to purchase um, them um, in sets of 10, which I think it's $2.50 for 10. Um, so that's a, another option for you as well. So here are the tokens, $2.50 for 10. And we go over how a basic member, which basically is a $10 a month membership, they get 
uh, I think they get the equivalent of actually they do get ten dollars worth of tokens for basic so that covers the membership and twenty five dollars worth of tokens for the pro which is five dollars more than um, the membership cost so we're basically trying to make it quote free to have the membership if you appreciate and use these features which I hope that more people will perhaps after seeing this video so going back to the front so one thing I wanted to point out to folks if you're still listening because this has been a long video is something that's happened with Facebook and this is concerning to us because we've spent several years developing a Facebook f uh, fan base and following to help get our message out and suddenly almost overnight um, the timing was about right after the IPO for Facebook went through and there was a lot of controversy because they found the revenue produced by Facebook annually which is mainly ad revenue is one hundredth of its uh, worth on paper its market capitalization so in other words now that they're publicly traded they have a fiduciary legal responsibility to make a profit they've had to find ways to generate income so if I go to um, if I go to the Facebook page, I want to show you something that's happened. As people have been saying, oh, you know, this is a uh, rumor. Facebook, uh, you don't have to pay for. Um, it's just some internet rumor. And it's true, you don't have to pay to be a member. You don't have to pay if, as a page administrator. But something has happened, which is very significant, which is if I go down to this post right here, um, it tells you what the default reach is here. Let me see. Can you see this? Here's a post we just did about five hours ago, and your default reach here is 12%. Okay, so what that means is only 12% of our fans uh, will receive this post. So what they're doing is they're offering us the option of bringing that up to 8,000 people. So within three days, slowly but surely, they'll populate these other people's walls, which would not normally get this post, with eight uh, additional. Actually, it's it's not 8,000 plus. 2,945. It's uh, it's about uh, sorry, 5,065 people additionally for $30. Let's say here are the other options. Okay, $50 reaches 14,000 in total. $75, 20,000, 100, 27,000, 27,000. So what this means basically, because we can't afford this, it's such an extremely high amount. And um, if it was a dollar a post, it would be a huge amount. We do about four or five posts a day. Over the course of a year, it's about, um, what is that, uh, 1,500 or more. So 1,500 times 100 would be, what, 150,000? Um, yeah, something like that. It would be a lot of money. So I don't know what they're thinking. Um, but what it does is it basically says that instead of Facebook allowing users to determine what becomes popular because a user that sees a post that likes it shares it is that they're allowing um, money to determine how much a particular post will appear in, in someone's feed and that's just going to change the whole dynamic um, and so that's just what I want to point out is that we just don't have the reach we thought we would having worked our way up to 25,000 fans just through good content and people sharing it now sometimes we'll post and 5% will get the post so in other words we're doing um, quite a lot of work getting good content out to you and it's just not going to reach you unless you intentionally set it up so that um, you you are going to get all of our posts which I believe you can do here uh, let's see it's going to be somewhere somewhere you have the option of enabling posts from us but so the point really I was trying to make though is that Facebook's great it's a free um, system I mean it's still doing an incredible job considering you don't have to pay anything so it is the ultimate tool for getting a message out still but um, we're gonna really have to depend more on things like people coming to our site because they're checking into content and then our newsletter and so our newsletter goes out every two to three days it has about three to four articles so if you haven't yet subscribed to it you know feel free um, it's pretty simple and this will enable you to stay within the loop and then of course if you're not interested in uh, what we have uh, in terms of articles you just don't have to open them so and of course we don't share it with anyone but I would encourage those who are not yet subscribers to go ahead and do that just so they stay in the loop 
So anyway, I, I appreciate you tuning in. If you have questions, uh, feel free to email. Um, you can email me Sayer G, that's S-A-Y-E-R-J-I, at greenmedinfo.com. And um, myself and Cameron are at your disposal. Uh, we're trying to improve the platform. We want to make sure that um, our mission stays true. And of course, it looks like Cameron just updated this a few minutes ago. You can click on View Our Mission Statement, and you'll see our basic plan of action here. You know, gather the research, disseminate it, and tr uh, really try to help empower you. So, in a second, it will load, and you'll actually see the old buttons. We are reworking these up here too because they're just not highly visually um, compelling right yet. Yet they're a little busy. But here's our old mission, which is still valid, and you still have our databases, and um, that's it. So again, thank you for tuning in, and uh, we'll have another update, I'd say, in a few more months. Thanks a lot. Bye.